Welcome back, boxing fans. Another pretty stacked fight weekend. I'm a little bit tardy. Combat Talk.fm. My name is Lifestar. I'm your host. I want to get this done because I'm a little bit on the late side. I had good reason because I'm about to start ramping up on some of our giveaway stuff. And I'm working that. And if you notice, by the way, our podcast episodes now synchronized to YouTube. So if you prefer to listen on the YouTube, if you're doing other stuff, we are on YouTube now. It's still audio. It's a podcast. But now we have multiple platforms from which to choose. Let's go and crash course through our fights. We've got some DAZN fights as well as Pro Box fights and then some, some that are not quite televised as far as I can tell. And then I've got a little bit of, of update after the fact. The top one, probably I think the most exciting fight, believe it or not, is on DAZN. It's out in Las Vegas at the Fontainebleau uh, Arena. 12 rounds at super lightweight action. Richardson Hitchens fighting Gustavo Lemos and Again, I think it's going to be the most exciting one. It's the title eliminator for the IBF Junior Welterweight title. So the winner of this fight is going to become a name in the Junior Welterweight division, which is, it's it's hot right now. So that's why I think this is going to be the most exciting one. You got two undefeated guys going at it. Richardson Hitchens has looked great. Uh, to his career, Lemos actually has looked really good. And here's the thing. Lemos has been way more active. He's taken way more fights. These guys are roughly the same age. But Lemos has been more active. He's taking more fights, and I think that's going to play in. I think you're going to see Lemos show up and show some serious stuff against Richardson Hitchens. And that's not dinging Hitchens. I think he's a good fighter, but I think the activity leans Lemos. I'm going to I'm gonna say Lemos might even get an upset win because it would be an upset given, you know, just simple platform. It's either that or a draw. Now, Hitchens could pull out something, and if he does, he, we need to keep eyes on the young man. I'm just, I'm leaning Lemos ever slightly because I think Lemos has more experience and he's been more active. He's been in the ring. He's been fighting. He's been there all night long. Other than that, it's roughly equivalent on the books in terms of when they debuted, you know, rounds in the books, the fight numbers are roughly the same. It gives a little bit of a lean towards Hitchens in terms of the height advantage. Because of the height advantage, most online feel that Hitchens is going to get a W. He very well might. But I'm saying this is the test of whether he can. Other thing to consider, Hitchinson is a straight-up boxer. He's pure boxer. Lemos is a boxer puncher. Means that Hitchinson could get caught with something and get taken out. And that's why I'm leaning slightly towards Lemos. I'm not committed fully because I recognize how good Hitchinson, Hitchins is. But this is a good fight to watch. If you're going to fight any, see any fight this weekend, this one's a good one to watch for sure. Undercard of that same event, 12 rounds of super middleweight action. Diego Pacheco makes his return. He's fighting Sean McCallman. I hadn't heard of McCallman prior to this. I watched a little bit of footage. Eh, pretty decent, good fighter. He's a little bit on the older side, and he wasn't as active as I would have liked to have seen him. So to me, Diego Pacheco is way too good for this guy, and I'm not saying it's a mismatch. That's not fair. I'm saying that Diego Pacheco is way too skilled for what I saw in McCallman. I don't think McCallman's going to have anything for Pacheco. Pacheco's been on a tear Five fight knockout streak most recent. He's still young, still in his prime, active like he needs to be. I, I think Pacheco blows this guy out sometime inside six rounds. That's my call on that one. Undercard of that same event, 10 rounds at flyweight action. Galalia five fighting Augustine Galto. I I didn't know a thing about Galto. Uh Yafai, my concern with him was he's his matchmaking. So when I watched some Galto footage, I wasn't impressed with what I saw. He has skill, he's got power, but I just wasn't generally impressed with him. There's something where it's like, if he's matched right, he looks like a beater. But if he's not matched right, he gets taken out. I think Yafai deals with this dude in short order. Yafai went the distance the last fight he was out, and I, I called that. I said, got to be careful on what you're doing here. He still looks good, but he didn't look great in his very most recent fight. I think here... I think it's a stoppage in my opinion, probably sometime before the sixth round of a 10 round. I think it's a stoppage for your five for that fight. Undercard of that same event, 10 rounds at women's featherweight action. Sky Nicholson fighting Sarah Mafold. And I, I'm such a fan of Sarah Mafold. I, I, I was disappointed. She took the L recently. She's bouncing back, coming back and I credit, you know, but she's older. Nicholson's younger. Nicholson's the Southpaw. Nicholson is highly skilled. I don't see Mafold getting a win on this one. Personal opinion, I I see Nicholson getting a W, likely by a decision, you know, full 10-round decision is my guess. Undercard of that same event, 10 rounds at super featherweight action. Mark Castro fighting Abraham Montoya. Had not heard of Montoya. I had only seen a couple fights of Castro. I had to refresh 
And then I remembered, okay, he's that dude who just gets you out of there and he looks really good in the ring, stylistically sound, well-rounded, uh, matched well. This is a good fight for what it is. But Montoya's coming off of a loss streak. Montoya's not even that old. He just, once he took his L, he never seemed to recover. I suspect Castro deals with him in short order. I'm going to guess probably a stoppage eh, sometimes bef sometime before the eighth round. I think Montoya will be there. And then at some point, roughly about round eight or something, I think Castro deals with it, if not less. Undercard of, now this is a different, so this is non-televised. So this is an undercard fight, but it's a different a venue. I don't even know if it's televised, but I'm talking this and I'll talk about the main event I saw. In case you're able to catch it and you know about it, this is in Germany, by the way. 12 rounds at middleweight action. Uh, Etnosolia fighting Ismail Sek. Ismail Sek, I do know. He's a veteran in the business. He wasn't as active. He got, he took an L and after he took his L, his mind was fucked and he's been done since. I think he gets washed against Olia. Olia, Olia is not an amazing fighter, but this is a mismatch. If you define a mismatch, <laughs> this is a mismatch. And in the main event, and the reason I'm talking about it, and I think it's worth talking about in case you can catch it if you're local to Germany or you know the broadcast, is 12 rounds of super welterweight action. This is actually for the uh, vacant IBF uh, junior middleweight title. So the 154 title, the vacant title, previously held, I believe, by Jamal, Jamel Charlo. But this is a vacant title, so the winner of this one will be a 154 champion. And the reason I'm talking about it is because of chatter that Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, and possibly Keith, once upon a time Thurman, will be going to 154 in campaign. Then he still got Danny Swift. But that's why I'm talking about it since a title fight. And that's weird it's not televised, or if it is, I don't know what the venue is. Jack Kokai, who I do know, fighting Murtasaliyev, uh, Bakram Murtasaliyev, and then Murtasaliyev, amazing fighter, love watching him fight. He's just a, I like watching this dude. Kokai's a decent, good fighter. I don't think he's got enough from Murtasaliyev. I think Murtasaliyev deals with him in short order, sometime before the sixth, but a belt is on the line, so if you do want to check that one out, just check out and see if you can find the venue for this for Murtasaliyev. If you're a fan of 154 and what it might have for the future, this is one to watch to see who might be a contender. Same venue, and I'm not sure if it's the co-main or undercar, but 12 rounds of super welterweight action. Harl Madavosian fighting Wiesma Lima. I didn't know anything about either guy. Uh, Lima, I think he's out of Russia, I believe. And then uh, Madavosian's out of Germany. Didn't know anything about him. I don't want to do them a disservice by you know misquoting or anything. I've, I've not done any study on either guy. Now we're going to switch over to ProBox TV. Shout out to ProBox TV. Screw boxing scene, but ProBox TV is up and rising, worth your time. They're doing the Wednesday night thing really well. I don't like Wednesday night, but I like what ProBox is doing. They give shout outs to their ring girls. And clearly, you know, the bosses behind this talked about it of what they really want boxing to be and how they want to be presented. And they're doing big things. Give them some credit. Again, screw boxing scene, but which they bought. But ProBox TV is definitely worth it. So check this out on Wednesday. That's what I'm talking about today at the White Sands event in Plant City, which is mostly their venue of choice for right now. Ten rounds at featherweight action. Angelo Leo fighting Eduardo Baez. I'm familiar with both. It's an evenly matched fight for what it is, although Baez is coming off losses. And so he's been on a, a steep decline. This is not a rebuild. This is really for Leo as a showcase. Leo had a loss. He's rebuilding. He's looked very strong in his last fight. So I obviously think Leo's going to wash and get a W here, probably sometime before the fifth round is my guess. And then at the same event here, uh, eight rounds at super featherweight action, uh, Jacob Zayas versus Jose Ariano. I'm, I'm aware of both guys, really good fight, matched well, decently well in the books. They roughly start in the same rounds of, you know, experience. I it's a really good fight. So check this one out for sure. I'm going to lean towards Zayas because he's a southpaw, rangy, uh, very, he's a boxer puncher. And I think he's, he's got more ahead of him than Ariano. So that's our fights on deck. Now to talk about some, I don't want to say news bits, but just some updates. So Terrence Crawford, he was trying to get Sebastian Fundora in the ring. It looks like that's not going to happen. As far as I can tell, looks like what's going to likely happen is Fundora vacating WBO for 154 so we can fight Errol Spence at 154 for the WBC, which leaves Terrence Crawford without an opponent. Now, of course, if he hadn't ducked boots, he could have had some fights and stayed active. But at this point, Crawford is going to be inactive for a year. We know how damaging that is to fighters. 
So maybe we get to see Crawford finally fight, you know, Keith once upon a time Thurman. I know nobody wants to see that fight, but it's better than Crawford staying inactive. It gives us a chance to get somebody in the damn ring because Crawford doesn't seem like he wants to get back in the ring because he's holding out for a Canelo fight. It's not going to happen. Floyd Mayweather came out and said, well, why don't you fight David Benavides? Since everybody says Benavides is the guy who should fight Canelo. If you go and fight David Benavides, it'll prove to everybody that you should be the one to fight Canelo and then Canelo may come after you. I agree with this. Munguia would come out or Munguia would come out and say, well, I was respectful to Canelo and Benavides wasn't. That's why I got the fight. Whatever you think, this is where we are. Again, Canelo Crawford's sitting, he's inactive. He's not getting fights. Devin Haney's getting fights. Tank's inactive. It's a weird time for the lesser weight classes. We got to see what's going to happen here in the near future.